Mariscos overload. This could be something right out of a country like Serbia. A taxi from Mexico City. Hi everyone and welcome to another Mexico video. This is part number 16 of my 2022 Mexico series. I'm just walking in the middle of the road so let's hope I don't get run over. In the last video I had an absolutely marvellous splendid day exploring the spectacularly stunningly beautiful San Carlos which is just down the road. It's about half an hour away on the bus but today I am in Eroica Guaymas de Zaragoza, otherwise known as Guaymas, if you want to do the short name. And today, in this video, I'm kind of doing the absolute opposite of the last one. The last one was very strenuous and physical and exhausting, but honestly, this morning, about two hours ago, I slipped over outside the bathroom, landed heavily on my backside and my coccyx, and then hit my head against the wall and knocked myself unconscious. So as you can imagine, I'm not in the best place in terms of my general physical well-being, but this is YouTube, the show must go on. So let's explore. So I'm in Plaza de Armas outside Iglesia de San Fernando, which is situated in front of these spectacular hills and mountains in the distance, this desert moon-like otherworldly backdrop, which just makes somewhere like Guaymas just so unique, as I said last time. It's very pretty, isn't it? Wonderful colors as always, and the kiosco in the middle. I was gonna say, apart from the extreme sunburn, sunstroke, migraine, and almost broken pelvis, everything else is fine. So generally I am invincible uh, in regards to injury. So I will just continue. If I could just sit down in this video, that would be great. Um, I am actually gonna be doing that. We're gonna be having some food. This is very much a food video, I hope. I always say that, but let's see. Before we go in the church, let's take a look at these Mexi dogs. Let's say hello. Cleverly, and they've got the right idea. They're sitting in the shade. <laughs> um, that's what you really need to do when you're in Sonora because it is absolute meltdown. Inferno total. So it is Sunday morning. I think there is a service about to start. These stained glass windows have seen better days. Perhaps they are having some restoration. I don't know. Typical Mexican church on a Sunday morning. Quiet and peaceful. So this place, I mentioned the big long name, Eroica Guaymas de las Zaragoza, Jesus. That's because it was originally called that without the Eroica, but then as with many places in Mexico, like Veracruz, for example, Eroica was added to the name as a result of, you know, things like the um, revolution, battle, war, specifically here, I think it was in relation to the French invasion in the 1850s, I think. Remember the whole thing with Napoleon and everything? Um, I talked about that in videos last year. Yeah, my Spanish isn't working today, clearly. Um, keep in mind, I keep in mind, I possibly have concussion. So that's my excuse. So the shots you're seeing in a second of the church behind me really are iconic because when I was researching here a long time ago now, probably the first thing I saw was this image of this church right in front of these mountains and hills behind and it truly is so unique. As always in Normex, we've got a bit of a mixture of older buildings, a bit of derelict, and also over in that direction, and obviously the uh, kiosco area, it's got that colonial aspect as well. Plaza de Armas reminds me a bit over there actually of um, Torreon, Torreon, with this wide open space, very modern. Oh look, there's a Palacio Municipal. And this is the Plaza de Tres Presidentes. Plaza of the Three Presidents, obviously. I wonder who they are. Let's go and have a look. Plaza de los Tres Presidentes. Adolfo Huerta, Plutarco Caes, y Abelardo Rodriguez. All from the 1920s and 30s. Standing up here, 
with these concrete posts behind them. Is this the Malacan? Yes, it's certainly not like Fayarda. There are no people anywhere. And this is the Monumento Pescador, the fisherman um, monument, that's the word. See, concussion. Uh, you get a lot of these, like uh, in uh, probably Mazatlan, Vallarta as well. These fishing monuments, obviously, because we're by the sea. And the um, key trade aspect or aspect of the economy here is shrimp, as I've mentioned before. So you can get camarones all over the shop. Oh, and we've got big boats again. Lovely, there's a rubber dinghy over there with people rowing. And I can smell the sea, and I can smell mariscos. And you've got these uh, sort of old crappy ships over there, little boats, I guess trawlers or something for um, catching mariscos. More huge birds, like in San Carlos. Just like in San Carlos, there is kind of this feel of a an abandoned fairground, phantasma place. You know, I know it's Sunday morning, but it's very quiet. I was going to go to a place called Empalme today, which is a little bit further out of the town. I actually went through there on the bus on the way from Ciudad Obregón. Thank you to one of my viewers who told me that apparently it's where Charlie Chaplin married a 16 year old, as you do. So there's a bit of interesting history here in relation to sort of old film history. Um, I mentioned in the last video about um, how it, San Carlos kind of made me feel like I was in Acapulco with the, the 60s starlets and everything. And I do kind of get the same feeling here that it's that kind of lesser known beach location that celebrities and that would come to, to be, you know, less visible in front of um, their adoring fans. Ours on that building there. How apt considering I need a new one. Yeah, this looks like Eastern Europe. There are some other ones near where I'm staying actually, like some really sort of grotty flats with, you know, clapped out cars outside the front, as you can see. It looks very run down, doesn't it? Institute of, oh, Social Security in Mexico. So is it like sort of social security housing? I don't know. I'm sorry to dwell on this, but this could be something right out of a country like Serbia, Belarus, Ukraine, the UK. You know, countries in Europe that required low cost living after World War II. You know, these three, four, five story concrete blocks. I think in uh, the ex-Soviet Union, they were Khrushchevkas, I think, if I remember rightly, named after Nikita Khrushchev. Why am I talking about the Soviet Union? This is Mexico, and there are cats over there. Psst. Hello, angels! Thinking about San Carlos for a minute, and here, oh, it's a huge octopus. Um, there is the feeling that San Carlos is the expat place, and Guaymas is the Mexico place. You know, we're gonna go to Centro now. Hands up if you used to do this when you were a kid. Go through like a clothing catalogue and draw moustaches on all the women. Moustache! Oh look, this is a nice little square. Very quiet, there isn't a soul to be seen. We've got this golden statue up the top. Hidalgo. Oh, the uh, centenary of the independence, 1810. Nice. Look at this bloody weather. Look at it. Blue skies, greens. I mean, it comes with the downside of absolute inferno, as I said. <laughs> um, but it is top tier. Hello, pigeons. Mexi pigeons. As usual, I don't really know how I ended up here. Uh, I thought I wasn't going to walk too far today. Um, there was a food place that was recommended to me, but it's like a million miles in that direction. And with my lack of functioning pelvis, um, I'm not going to go that far. So I'm heading back to Centro. There's a food place up there, which was my backup, which if closed will result in a meltdown. FYI. It's 
another church over there. Or is it a cathedral? Very nice. Look at how the clouds are. Beautiful, right? And we've got more wonderfully colourful flowers. I mean, trees and petals. Wonderful. Um, I think this area is definitely more of a lower income area. You can just tell. This is really different, isn't it? With that bit at the front, like the covered area with the columns. And there are three towers on it. Nice. That's something you don't see every day in Northern Mexico. A taxi from Mexico City. And yes, it is a taxi because I can see on the door where the lettering has been removed. On the subject of slightly rundown areas, there is an issue with YouTube, I think, you know, it, and being a foreigner in a, in a place, because when you come somewhere like this, you know, I'm a foreigner, I'm a tourist, I'm not from here. It's easy to kind of glamorize places when you're not aware whatsoever of the struggles the locals face. It's exactly the same anywhere. When people go to London and post videos about, oh, London's so amazing. I was born there, I grew up there, I worked there for the first 34 years of my life. I know the negatives, just as a local here or Ciudad Obregón would know the negatives. It's a comment I get a lot because it's easy to go to a place like Obregón or here and think, wow, so cool, amazing, and that's what you portray, naturally. But you have to keep in the back of your head as well that locals are here, locals are watching, they know the reality. There's no way on earth I ever could, and I wouldn't even try to because it's just not possible, you know? So it's just a random thought to uh, keep in mind when you're watching YouTube videos. Those buildings up there, kind of up that little hill, are the ones I was talking about, like the uh, concrete tower blocks with uh, like sort of old text on the side. It says multi something. Watch out, it's a Mexi dog. <whistles> Hello. Ah, that's the last time I walk up a steep hill in my condition. Yeah, this is very, 70s UK brutalist with those concrete block thingies there and you've got this some would say a horrendous concrete block I saw coupled with the monumental landscapes in the distance where else can you see this sort of thing are endless you got that one you got that one you got that one there's loads of them amazing oh there's that guy I saw him from my place uh, who is he because of my pelvis I cannot walk up there any further Okay, I'm getting this far. I can't go up the steps. I'm sorry. You'll have to tell me in the comments who that is or I'll find out and put it on the screen. Um, this is like a Balkan fortress overlooking the town, as in the aforementioned Serbia, also North Macedonia. Had places like this with this stonework and rocks of a fortress overlooking a city. Look at this, man. pretty isn't it it's like central mexico with all the colorful buildings polishing a turd to make somewhere look better than it actually is oh did i just say that oh, <laughs> i'm joking of course as always but it's nice to see a bit of color for once okay according to google maps the place i'm looking for is here somewhere i've got to say it doesn't look promising i was ready to say Por amor de Cristo, <laughs> for the love of God, but it is open, <sighs> milagro. So we have tacos, we have actual manta, which is what I'm having. Oh, thank you very much. 
<laughs> There's lots of different options, seafood related. I'm actually having a few things because I'm absolutely starving. So I have basically two dishes, one of which I've been incredibly excited to try. I might regret it because I've never had a certain seafood before, which is manta ray. Unbelievable, right? Let's have a look. So this here is like a caldo, like a soup or a broth, which has in it manta ray, as you can see. Oh God, it looks quite scary, if I'm honest. <laughs> it's like an eel. Um, <laughs> but I've also got it, I got the uh, combinado one with shrimp because I do like camarones. And originally, kawamanta, it was made with loggerhead turtle. But because that was made uh, illegal to hunt that, it was changed to manta ray. And I thought I might as well go all out and get a manta ray taco as well. I've um, put the salsa on it. We've got red onion. There's some lettuce, which I've taken off a bit. It looks like there's carrot in it as well. I put some limon on it too. So let's tuck in. Okay, here goes nothing. If I can eat a scorpion in Durango, I can eat manta ray. Here goes nothing. Shockingly, I like it. Very meaty. Um, and the broth really uh, kind of adds the spice to it, you know. Come on. Up. I can't believe I like manta ray. It looks a bit scary, if I'm honest. But when you, once you eat it, it's fine. But it's not as bad as the scorpion. See what I mean? It doesn't look the most appetizing thing in the world, does it? <laughs> and actually, someone I know, you probably know her as well, Turismo Con Pau, she told me that she isn't a big fan of this. Um, that remains to be seen, whether I am. <laughs> Look at the size of this taco, it's so loaded. I can't even pick it up, how am I gonna eat it? <laughs> Unsurprisingly, there's so much on it, and it's so heavy that it literally fell apart as soon as I picked it up. So basically, I'm just picking at it. Um, manta ray, I think it might be a bit of an acquired taste. I'm sure it's a bit of a delicacy, you know, it's not something you see all the time. Is it ethic ethical to be hunting manta ray? I don't really know much about that subject. This is like mariscos overload. With this manta ray, right, there are some bits of it, like that, for example, that are very meaty. It's just like a piece of meat, you know. Um, but there are other bits like that. You can see the uh, like the scales. So I guess that's the exterior of the manta ray. And underneath that, I can't really do it on the... Oh, there we go. It's kind of a bit fatty and, like, jellyfied. I don't like that texture at all. I completely forgot to say, I also ordered bitches. Not bitches. Um, it's a similar word. Um, but I didn't receive it, and then I forgot to ask about it. Brilliant. Um, Apparently it's like the uh, like the broth from the caldo that I had that you like drink like a hot spicy drink thing but it means in yaki naked which was the state I was in this morning when I fell over and almost broke my pelvis brilliant that dish was also a bit like what I had in Dorango the caldillo which was with beef and a particular type of chili it was right if I'm honest it's not something that I would insanely run out to get in the middle of a zombie apocalypse. So I'm walking gingerly to the bus station. Apologies I couldn't do more in this video, but contrary to popular belief, I'm not an android or the bionic man. But overall, putting the two videos together, I've enjoyed myself, despite the possible pelvis transplant. It's a different side of Mexico, and I think both together, they are both very different, but they also complement each other. So, oh, great copyrighted music. It's time to say goodbye to this awesome landscape and it's also time to go back to Obregón again thank god oxo so yeah subscribe and all that like comment and everything um and i'll hopefully see you next time hopefully again without a metallic coccyx implant brilliant catch you later Hi,